Chance complexity Five. leaves syllabi right here, so yep. there yes. you go. Told so you just you. lost your life savings. No. There's no way they leave syllabi. They're gonna owe me ten dollars. No, please. See? Exactly. It's counterable. EG knows how to do it. If you don't know how to counter Lone Druid by now, you're not a tier one team. Sorry. Oh, cripes. Reserve time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get rid of that lash. My ten dollar life does, savings. Does complexity have a coach right now? Uh, no. I'm just wondering. Mm. And I know. The Naha situation is we don't know. Is Naha yes! still coaching? Your life savings. Give me my life savings. And First pick, Lone Druid. Jesus. Turn to pick. Yay! I'll buy it for you when I drive you home. There's no car. There's a car. Oh my! Can we never get in this argument? It's literally, I literally went there two days ago and ate again <laughs> at work. It exists. It, oh my! It's not God. real. Oh, I got the new one with Ten scrambled eggs. It's the, the breakfast burger. Uh, yeah, oh. that's can't be real. No, that's it's good. Sounds Ten awful. It is good. Look at it. It is good. Keeper of the light. Yeah. We oh okay. All Lord right, Drew time to see Coddle you. Slardar? Why he's been banned every game? The hash browns. It's good. All right. Anyway. All right. Listen here, So Coddle picked up first. <laughs> it should be Slardar, too. Oh, Earth, Earth okay. There it is. The crit. Complexities <laughs> turn to. Yeah, it is for a big boy. <laughs> 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 We're not at the third pick yet, guys. Try to keep it together. I like food. <laughs> keep it together, guys. We still got two more picks before we can let it go. The crit spirit. Okay. Some people say Jerex is the best. Some people say well, crit. But... What do you guys think? Tim's. Yeah, okay, Tim's Tim's is pretty fucking good. You're right. I mean, what is reserve time? I can see that. What is pick two for complexity? What What do you want to combo with your lone druid? Uh, anything that can take... dazzle. Yeah, you need somebody so that lone druid could be on the back lines, and then. Somebody else is going crazy. Slardar isn't bad here, either. Yeah, Slardar is great. Nick. Ooh. That's a pretty good choice. It's a deny pick from Evil Geniuses so that they can't have a Nyx to go in against Loon Druid, which is probably one of the better counters. And then uh, they have somebody to do a little bit of that mana burn action, baby! Yeah. yeah. And Earth Spirit. Too. And Magnetize. It's a good Nyx setup. I like it. Five seconds remaining. Complexities turn to ban. I go, man. EGs turn to ban. I'll just be, I'll never bet against Syllabar, so I'm already going to claim complexity takes us to game five. Damn, dude. Whoa. I think EG's ready. They're gonna they're gonna demonstrate how you beat a reserve time. I just feel like people overvalue. He's banned. He's banned, so none of them. <laughs> you idiot. <laughs> what the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> what? <laughs> Go to hell. Being banned does not affect his win rate, dude. That's it's a separate it <laughs> Shut it down. Stop, shut it down. We've made it EG's turn to pick. Oh what a shame the TeamSpeak server seems to have crashed. Oh my. Uh, we're just kidding. You were just kidding. Jubain. It worked. Yeah. You made it, dummy. Made it. Okay, here we go. Ten seconds remaining. It's over. Get wrecked. Five seconds. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, out. Reserve time. He's got a double edge. He's great. Would you shut the fuck up? <laughs> That's true. No. 
<laughs> yes. Uh, I say yes, so yes. Sure. Fine, yeah. Suns fan, absolutely, if you can call this third pick for EG. Can you call this third pick right now? No. <laughs> Okay. Wow, you are the worst panelist. Wow, way, way to take Whoa. the layup there. Uh, Whoa. take the, the countermaster. Yes. How do you beat a lone druid? By putting him in the air, killing the rest of the team, and then killing him after. I mean, it's not the, the worst idea. It's good disable. Yeah. And we saw him. He had a great laning phase. Yes. He's, Ten seconds remaining. he's a panda. <laughs> What a great pick he would have been. I think Purge is sitting at his desk right now, just smacking his head into a chalkboard, just like, Jesus. <laughs> Washing the filth. <laughs> All right, so Slark knocked down. I'm surprised no one's going for the Weaver ban, but well, whatever. Has it? It's won one game out of the three? Yeah, but it's just it's just your classic lone druid, right? He, it's a good setup for EG go, here yeah. if they take the Weaver. He you goes through and... Weaver versus Earth Spirit and Weaver versus Nyx is just, it's rough. Like, either of those. And Weaver versus Coddle of the Light, Keeper of the Light. The Coddle, Pardon yeah. Pardon me. No, but I'm thinking, like, Evil Geniuses. They're, I would expect them to pick up a Weaver. So. And so, I mean, Nyx is really, really good against Weaver. Like, you know... Omni Knight. Oh, yeah, boy! <laughs> Actually, so good. Does the wind panda's dispel not take off repel anymore? No. No, non dispellable. Okay. Uh, it could be a, a rough early game. I mean, Mana Leak is always kind of very annoying on Omni Knight, but if this game goes mid to late and we get some items that get rid of that, like a Guardian Greaves or something, or a uh, you know, Lotus. I like the idea of Omni against a hero like Brewmaster because Brew is not one that you want to go super late. You, know, you really want to hurt in that mid game, and that's yeah. where Omni can really stretch things out. A couple of good ultimates to counteract the primal split. But again, Stalls out the game well. The tornado is super annoying, especially if he puts Ursa that on the Omni. And oh, wow, you're gonna pick Ursa into Don't an Omni. All right, bold. Let's see what you got. But why is that bad? Because of GA. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I mean, in my book, though, if I make an Ursa by a Diffusal, um, well, that's good. <laughs> I've is already done my I mean, job. Is Diffusal that bad on Ursa? Blink Diffusal? You jump right on Lone Druid, he can't run away from you? I think you're... But think about it. I think you've lost a lot of games against Ursa. <laughs> but think about it. Reserve time. Right. Ah, oh, well, in that case. Right. Does Keeper of the Lights, Man League, still instant stun Silibear's bear? Does yeah, right? No, that's he has mana now. Correct. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, Savage. Oh, He's got, good. what, a 300 mana pool? Oh, okay. Mm. Mm. It, it can't absorb the, that much. That though. could be the difference between a loss and a win. Very true, Grant. <laughs> Vengeful Spirit now for complexity. Is this carry number two then? No. Uh, I, it could. Lone Druid, I think. I, I think seven. I don't. I think I, I've seen them both played in pubs, but with this Venge now. This feels like more of support Venge with like a Nyx in the offlane. Then what is Omni doing? Five Killing people? <laughs> is he Supporting? Not a position 5 Omni, please. Okay. That would be 4. Oh. Reserve time. Uh huh. But That's what I'm thinking. Nyx 4 is awful. I would actually rather. Complexity. I'd rather have a support lone druid than a support Nyx. <laughs> Which isn't bad. Bear goes in with it's mech not. and I've pipe. I've used it, yeah. It's good. They're not doing that, but no. they could. So you guys think it's going to be an offlane Omni, not an offlane Nyx? Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Higher levels. I guess cool. I I want to say it's looking like a lone druid middle right now, but we don't really know the. I guess it depends what EG picks here. Lone druid. Hey, how, how... Pretty bad. Yeah. Eh. He's, he could be okay if you're if you're planning around him. Lena. Yeah, he could be all right. Wow, Lena. That's gonna be seven four seven, Lena. Yeah. Alchemist. That's the Eric hey, Dog hero. There oh you go. my god. Sons Clappa. <laughs> Sons Clappa. <laughs> I 
I'm leaving. All right. I'm leaving. Well, uh, so are we confident in this Alk pick, though? Um, I, I'm confident in the Lena pick. I mean, yeah, sure. uh, that's uh, one, one of the few combinations that you can hold out as a coddle and then have it pay off, right? But I think we're good. I'm going to go with complexity on this <laughs> I, one. I am too. I think 747, like that's, if he, he is on the lean, I assume that is, I love. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. I like yeah, it. I, I mean, would say so. Lena can be legit against Alk too. Huge burst damage. Take yeah, him out man. before the chemical. No, it's seven rage. four. Prepare for battle. Our draft analyst talked about what an even draft we're looking at. We got Omni Knight, we got Lena, we got all sorts of new bodies, especially an alchemist. I'm Annie, joined by Purge. Hello. What are you making of all this? I'm, I'm not really sure. I, I was just enjoying how fast the panel flip-flopped when they realized who was playing what. I mean, I did kind of like the the burst-heavy lineup that, that Cole's picked here, and it's also still pretty good at 5 manning. Um, but... You know, it's kind of it's kind of good the alchemist. It's good against brewmaster potentially if you chain stun and nuke him down. But uh, we'll see how it works out. I haven't I haven't watched too many lone druid games lately, but um, you know, I'm excited to see how their their draft ends up working out. It's it is very like it's very Cole esque. You know, uh, decent lanes, this like 20 minute period, or maybe you get a rax if you're winning fights. We'll see if that happens. <laughs> yeah, back to the panel flip flop. I know that was pretty funny. Uh, of course, seven four seven. Their mid player does play a pretty nasty Lena, but this time going to opt for the lone druid. How's that going to fare up against our, our other mid laner? It's arguably very good in the mid lane just because of the fact that um, once you get level 5 especially, you can just get some easy routes. Although I, don't, I expect RTZ to not spend a stupid amount of time in the mid lane, so yeah. Um, at least once he gets a couple levels, so I don't know. may impact things. Uh, it's also kind of scary though against an Earth Spirit because Earth Spirit is very good at disabling. And if you can get on top of a lone druid, like gap close him and keep him there a little bit longer, it should be an easy kill, especially if RTZ goes for like an early point of stun. So could go both ways. Yeah, I mean, if he doesn't get the stun, like say like right now they wanted to initiate, who do they need to bring to this? Do they need to get the Earth Spirit on this, or can they get yeah. a go of it with just a mana leak or something? Uh, it's it's going to be hard to kill him. Um, it'll mostly take like uh, probably Earth Spirit plus one. Maybe Zy rotates over and gets a blast off as well. That could really work. Nice. Now, down bottom, we've been talking about Monkeys all series long, how he's been performing like crazy on this off lane. Now, he's going to play a pretty aggressive Omni, starting out with that D-Gen aura. So he wants to run at you. He wants to farm. He wants to kill you. How is this Omni going to scale up? Awful, this game. <laughs> this is like oh, the worst matchup I can think of for, for melee. Any melee hero versus an Ursa is a really bad time. It was, it was pretty obvious what the lanes were going to be, this just because of uh, Omni was picked. It's like, well, it's either that or Nyx, and even Nyx against Ursa is kind of bad. I think the only thing that would have been a decent matchup is like Lone Druid versus um, Ursa. That could definitely work, but even that would have been a bit scary. So um, just a little bit of lane matchup advantage here for EG. I would say a lot of bit of lane matchup advantage. Let's be Sumail, by the way, in the mid lane. Kind of interesting. It's him to dive him. So please dive me. Let my tower kill you. I was talking about the safe <laughs> Yeah, I was like, a, I'm like, I'm, I'm reading that right. I'm pretty sure now they do have that uh, light strike right connecting onto yeah. Zai. Zai just walks back into it, realizing he's dead either way. And Universe wants to get something out of this, but another light strike array. They got the impale, they got the follow up. Moo has a stun. He's holding onto it. I don't know why it. he walked this way. That, was, that is interesting. He's worried about the farm. He definitely could have gotten that stun. Try to save crit here. Yep, going back into bottom crit is stuck here, trying to roll oh, across the river. He is able to do that. Monkeys just doesn't have the damage to punish him. Had a mango. Good on for the purify, but... Yeah, I'm a little, really surprised Moo didn't go for that kill. It might, it might have taken a while. Have been oh, a little, there we oh, go. Oh, wow. Okay. There's the purify. <laughs> Alright, so things going pretty well for Cole. Up 2-0 now. Yep, pretty nice. I'm, I'm interested to see how this core Venge works out. I mean, it's definitely viable in this meta, but I'm wondering in this lineup, is that going to be strongest hero like to skill? I, I like it in this lineup because um, it, it gives you a way to save a Lone Druid, where Lone Druid um, range, the issues gap close. So late game, even if Lone Druid gets gone on, you can swap him to save him. 
and also just having a lot of levels of Vengeance Orb means that Lone Druid himself is going to hit way harder than normal. So it's kind of a cool way to, to play this out. Ooh, Sai sniping the whole large camp. That's a nice grab for him. Still a lot of fighting going on down here. Um, Z Freak with the Orb of Venom, kind of a cool choice just to slow people down a bit more. Um, and that allows Omnia to shave off his items as well and get a faster Arcanes. But Kurt with his invis, it's about to break here as he freaks. God, be careful. Kurt just gonna roll himself away, so these two dire heroes aren't gonna be punished for now. It's all a matter of can they actually turn this into anything. Monkeys, he's he's trying to farm, and it looks like they do want to make a go at this Ursa. They've got that Purify ready to go. Level 2, it does a fair amount of damage to Mail. Might be able to find the kill onto Z-Freak, hits that ground, finds the kill, and Monkeys can't catch up to him. He's limping so gosh darn fast. Get in there! The DJ of course to... clipping. He's slow. Oh man. Nice. Dude, Monkeys, what the hell? He is He's on so it. on point. He read that one real good. That was perfect. It, I thought he wasn't going to be able to grab him there, but um, really nice prediction there, and gets the Purify heal. Yeah, I like that Appreciate. faith he had. He's like, I, I know the Ursa is either right next to me or nowhere even close around me, so I may as well just go yeah. for it. It was worth a try. It could have been a TP as well. You never know. If he walked in, bought a TP, tried to TP. Yep. Grab. And considering he's against an Ursa, he's doing a great job. Yeah, we talked about how brutal that lane can be, but Monkeys is definitely holding his own now 2-0 and oh, against Sumail's uh, 1-2. and two. Sumail jumping a lane with even more regen, a self and a set of tangos. Um, after his early start, so kind of an interesting build, but he really needs this because otherwise he's just simply not going to be able to stay in the lane. A couple of purifies and he's got to go jungle or something, so... And in fact, that's might might be what he's doing right now. Because he doesn't feel safe in the lane anymore if it's like Nyx Assassin plus Omni. Purifies add up really fast. Yeah, the issue is you also have Alchemist who wants to keep dipping into the jungle and get a camp stacked up for him and keep farming that way, so there's going to be a little bit of competition, maybe resources a little bit slim on the Radiant side. Yeah, they definitely are actually, and the issue with this many people in the jungle, and there's even Coddle actually, another hero that actually jungles them out. If all of these people spend their time in jungles, there's less to go around, less people in lanes, and, and Cole's just going to keep getting, getting an advantage, and it just might turn into this like 20 minute oh. Rax push thing. Bottom lane, a little wrap around there. Z Freak was definitely thinking about going in for that impale, but a lot better of it, just eats a couple of shots, pops the carapace, and everyone's going back to farming. When do you think we're going to see our first, you know, real big rotation? You know, four I, heroes I, smoke up, go hunting. Uh, most likely we'll see it on EG's side, I feel. I mean, Cole Cole is really happy with this setup right now, I believe, because, I mean, they're getting pulls going with Melon, so he's getting some levels. Uh, oh. They're doing lane, that's oh, Melon trouble. Bottom lane. Good ulti timing there, stop the purify damage. That saved him a lot of hurt. Showing off that level six, but I mean, Samael's still having a really tough time in terms of last hits. He's, he's pretty much even with the Omni, which is not what you'd expect against a melee versus Ursa lane. And now they're just going to chunk him down to half Freak's again. Gotta be careful. Zephyr has to be careful, but so does Sumail. Monkey's going to be going Guardian Angel. That means he doesn't have enough mana for the Purify. They still Super get the kill. It. Really nicely done there. That top uh, lane, oh. they're looking for more. Zai gets dangerously low. And Amu going to be trying to focus down Universe. That, for the light, has a Guardian Angel, man. I was trying to figure out what killed uh, Sumail there, but it was the spike here of the Earth. Earth, uh, Earth Shock. It's really nicely done by Z-Freak to play that. I felt really dangerous because he had so many stacks on him, but um, Sumail changed targets a bit, knowing that there was going to be a spike care for reflect, and ultimately it didn't work out. He's getting outplayed a little bit. Yeah, I think in that situation it's do or die, and if the Nyx is already committed, I mean, he's not going down without a fight, so phenomenally played by Call, and I mean, like you talked about, this isn't EG performing poorly. This is Call just being on fire now. Up top, we are going to have our Panda gets hit by pretty much everything. Also takes a light strike array to the face, Moo. Maybe focus back a little bit, sprays out some uh, of terror, and finally one more right click gets the Coddle down. We've got Crit trying to TP out. Moo does not have mana for a stun unless he wants to mango, but not going to find that one in time. I didn't even see the Coddle was low. I was just looking at the Brewmaster the whole time. I call um, goes in, he consistently gets like hit down within an inch of his life and that time the range was there, they were able to get one more right click. 747, level 7 right now, 4 points in his bear, so got a root chance, got magic resistance, uh, dive bottom actually. Oh, Zephyr puts a tree, but it's not perfect. Fine time though. <laughs> it's not perfect, but he bought what he needed to buy and Moo's able to TP in. They're able to find the impel Zephyr, there's a chance he still dies. Fancy swap for Moo, just to get him out of danger, but that just is... Complexity just really getting yeah. on point this game. They're, they're just consistently outplaying EG right now. Six to one advantage, and when you have that many greedy heroes on your team like Alchemist and Master's not so much that case, but Ursa's having a rough time. He's only got Baze Boots or Venom right now. 
Yeah, Nurse is one of those heroes that, you know, he has an absolute crud laning phase. It's not that easy for him to bounce back. Yeah, absolutely true, because you do need to snowball a bit from the kills that you get, but he's not going to get there very rapidly, and, and even if he does, he's got to worry about things like Nyx Assassin, Omni Knight, Swap. There's a lot of issues, and a lot of stuns as well, that are going to stop him from killing heroes. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we're, you know, eight minutes and change into the game, and Urst is sitting on phase boots and a raindrop. Like, no progress on lifesteal items, no progress on blink. There's going to be a late first Roche for him, if he even goes for it at all. He'll go eventually, I'm sure, but... Really not tiny. I really like the Dire Observer Wards, really good pressure close. Um, he spots out Arteezy, the armlet is ready to go, and he's gonna go jungling. Meanwhile, gonna set this up. Crawling around, hunting for something. Complexity, they found a little momentum, and they definitely want to ride this wave. I'm gonna try to kill Arteezy here. <laughs> That's a worthwhile kill if they can find it. 747 oh, finds it. And he turned out the lights, dude. That guy's dead. He made it a lot worse, lost half of his HP here. Didn't even use Chemical Rage because he didn't expect it. Oh, Universe misses clap too. Universe, he's angry, he's going, he's hurling boulders at the Nyx Assassin. Meanwhile, Melon's focusing down crit, gets kicked down to the low ground. Lone Druid joins the party, impale from the Nyx, buying him some time. Z-Freak may still go down here, but the rest of his team is going, circling up. This uh, Panda split going to be ending right about now, and that's Universe eating a missile, eating a light strike array. Going down once again, Sumail gonna get swapped into the fight! This is just a one-by-one one trickle! That ult is not gonna last forever, and Sumail's gonna be going down as well! What the hell is happening, Perch? I, I don't know, man. I, this, I mean, this is cool. This is the team that beat EG twice in best of threes at, at Boston. That's the team that gets in EG's head. This is EG, the team that this morning got directly invited to the Kiev Major. Yeah, and Cole, <laughs> I mean, Cole did look a little bit weak in the last game, but... They're looking really good now. Their Lanian Sage has definitely improved a lot. They're coordinating extremely well in these fights. Absolutely. Everyone really getting what they need to out of the laning phase here. The thing to watch, of course, is the Alchemist has had a little bit of space to himself, but they went, they rotated, they killed him at a crucial time. And he's been starving a little bit, didn't get what he needed to in, in lane. They freak may get caught out here. He's only level 5, does not have that Vendetta. Carapace saving his life a little bit, and there we go! There's the Purification and Repel from Monkeys. And they're gonna reinitiate here. Light Strike Array is off the mark, but the impale's there. They hold the Ursa in place. This Ursa can't stop dying. That is he a can't, sixth he death. can't do anything. He just walks into the fight and, and there's like eight stuns. He's like, well, which one am I gonna try to prevent with my ulti, at least limit the damage? And he could dodge two of them, but the third one's gonna hit, and then that'll buy enough time for the next stun to be off the cooldown. Like <laughs> yeah, if he doesn't is... kill somebody in the fight, like it's so difficult for him to accomplish anything. It feels like Urs has just been on damage control the entire game, never going in on the aggressive, just trying to limit how much damage he ends up taking. Now, Universe here, he's he's smashing the ground. He's going to get roared away. Ooh, Lightstrike is going to be missed, so it looks like he may get away from this one. Nice blast there. Bottle big, a little bit of space, but I mean, again, that's just driving away the problem. That's not really addressing the fact that Complexity have a nine kill lead at uh, 11 yeah. minutes in. And the, the net worth is pretty insane, too. If there wasn't an Alchemist in this game getting accelerated gold, their gold advantage would be incredibly fun. And in some ways, that's really bad for EG because in they some should ways? be like so far behind in gold that if any kills at all at this point, they'll get a massive swing. But because the Alchemist has so much net worth, it makes the gold graph look kind of balanced when it's not at all. Oh, top lane. Looks like there's going to be a stun channeled up from Marteezy. He is going to be able to get it off onto Mu. Boulder Kick comes in, connecting onto two. Can they turn this into kills? That's going to be the critical question. Nyx has Vendetta up in two more seconds. He's going to be able to go and slither on through, get that little extra bonus strike if he needs it. And now Arteezy, he's just punished. He's got his armlet rocking for him. 15 seconds until he's got that Chemical Rage back up. Vengeful Spirit being held in place by the Wind Panda. Monkeys keeps chasing forward. And EG, they go in, they spend the resources just to hold Complexity back. They don't get any kills in return. Yeah, it's not a good way to use Panda ulti. He had to use it there, but it doesn't mean it's going to be beneficial for them. So Meanwhile, 747 taking out a tier 2 tower solo at 12 minutes in. And Sumail's like, oh, I'd love to kill you, but I mean, I'm super far behind in <laughs> items. I'm just going to scratch you a little bit. He's got like a third of the gold that, that Lone Druid has already. He's already got oh, Dragon Lance, Aqua God. Phase, Mithril Hammer. He's, like, he's almost done with his Maelstrom. He's like 900 gold away from that. Urs is behind yeah. the Nyx. He's got less than 3k net worth at 12 and a half minutes. Not a great time. That's one of the most frustrating things too, when you almost outplay people in your lane, but they outplay you slightly. Because you're like, oh, I could just be having 8 kills right now and ending the game, but instead you guys beat me just barely, but repeatedly enough where I just seem like I don't know what I'm doing. 
very frustrating to do. Now Ursa's gonna be hurting even more as Complexity move into the pit at 12 minutes in. Get themselves an Aegis. Now there's gonna be a crit strolling in. He's looking for oh, a he can seal snipe. this move. Uh, he could. That's a kind of cost him though. Oh, it's a lot of <laughs> HP, that's for sure. And they're probably, I wonder if they're wondering. For it. Clap happened because there's three heroes there. I don't, is, I don't think they realize. Is Melon the god? Oh, he knows, he knows, he knows. Yeah, yeah, they, they know, know, for sure. Well, they're kicked out. The Aegis is gonna be snatched immediately popped, like within a third of a second. And they're gonna kill him again. I mean, Dyer still get the Roche gold. They won't get the Aegis for that, but it's, it's just pushing their lead up and up and up. Yeah, Swindles figured that out there. The, the Roche only claps if there's three heroes in the area, and there was only the bear, I think, in Omnis. So because he clapped, it was obvious, if you were paying attention, that there were three heroes there, which is why he threw the stun. But um, unfortunately, he they, it does get snatched. I don't think Cole cares that much, though. I mean, I mean it's obviously the extra a negative, gold. but yeah, they got the gold, so the advantage continues. They'd love to have an Aegis on Lone Druid because he is a little vulnerable oh, sometimes. No. But... For that solo kill onto Zai, can definitely find it. Look at this horse just melt. I'm just gonna back out and real realize it's potentially not the safest engage. Of course, killing anyone in complexity now is gonna be a really big net worth swing as they are so far ahead. Yeah, I'm sure Zai feels like that one was an easy gimme, but if you looked at where the other EG players were, none of them were on the map, so he was not feeling super confident about his ability to not die if he swapped there, so much safer for them to get kills that they know are gonna work out rather than messing around a little and getting punished for it, so it was a good play. Kind of interesting skill build actually by Mu. He grabs magic resistance this game, not the 25 attack speed. Completely counterintuitive compared to the typical bench carry, but um, oh, Cold does play very HP heavy almost always, or team fight survive kind of stuff like stack up your armor, stack up your HP, just more HP than them and win, get, win fights that way. All right, until, until a fraction of a second ago, you look at the net worth breakdown chart. It's Alchemist riding as high at the top of the chart, and then it was all of complexity sitting above all of Ichi. This this is very early on. This is scary now. Universe could be in some trouble here. Gonna get impaled. He does have his ult, but he's just gonna get stun locked. The nuke damage is unreal from complexity, and they're just chain killing EG like it's nothing. Really tough. They have the radiance at least, but with a dead universe, gotta wait 20 seconds to take the fight now. Not the best place. Who's gonna transition to a shadow blade? That'll be kind of nice. Freaks already got a Midas for God's sake. Like that's gonna guarantee a really fast like Ags or Blink Tiger or something at a good timing. That'll make it even harder for Alchemist to stay alive in fights. Tense moment here is EG. They know they need to defend this, but they're not quite sure how. The whole game has pretty much been about you know minimizing death and just trying to play safe, and they haven't actually gone in the aggressive yet. They've tried to in the laning stage, but when you're this far behind, it's tough. You gotta wait for the perfect moment when your opponents uh, overextend, continue chasing, and then you can turn around and fight, fight after they make a mistake. It's to mail, still no blink dagger. 16, 16 minutes in, still no blink dagger. He's, he's trying, Purge. I mean, still no nothing. It's, it'd be different if he didn't have a blink dagger, but you know, he had a, a full lifesteal item, but he's he's riding the struggle bus hard. A 747. Might get focused down here. This could be a really big kill. He's managed to get us himself in ultimate form and finally does die. That's that's a big one. You know, and that is going to be about all because 500 crit golds. stole the Aegis right there. That would have been a good fight for Cole if he had Aegis, but they just run straight at that guy and that's the one they grab. Then it's a big kill. So finally they get a kill. Definitely. I mean, is this is this the beginning of a slide back from EG? How do they ride this momentum as effectively as possible? Uh, try not to die until they get Primal Split again. Probably their next step, because now they're definitely going to be weak for a bit. Um, Mask of Death. Oh, I'm sorry. He does, does buy BKB. Or Blink, sorry. On Ursa. They're a little bit... looking a little bit better now, but they kind of don't have very many towers, so that's the, the big issue for their team. Yeah, again, they're still going to be limited by you know, map resources even as the game goes late, because EG aren't in a position where they can sneak across the river just yet, especially with the Nyx crawling around. Super risky, so they're limited by their own jungle. And that's, uh, I mean, it's only got a finite amount of creeps. God, did over you to... Sorry, oh. did, you, did you see the Midas on Omni Knight too? I, I did not. And you got the GPM. Neat, so he is just rolling in it. Two shields, got a golden hand, and he's going to buy a Blink Tiger. What Make a guy. Cool choice. It's going to make his Guardian Angels really good, because normally when Omni uses Guardian Angel, it's like one, two heroes, but now he can just plant it on everybody on his team. It's going to make a big impact versus uh, Alchemist. Like, Acid Spray, is like, it just doesn't matter anymore <laughs> when he uses that skill. Speaking of Acid Spray, let's take a look at old Arteezy here. You mentioned the Radiance pickup, but 
We haven't really seen it have much of an impact. He's still sitting way at the top of the net worth chart, but if an alchemist weren't, that is that's a huge problem. So yeah. TC's doing his job. The problem is, is he actually going to get space to make the plays? EG, like this rotation, they've got to find something here. Monkeys, will he get a chance to react? He's silenced up, he's stunned, and he will go down. Very big kill for EG. RTZ, he gets there eventually. That was just in case there there was a five-man engagement, so he TP'd just in case. But um, he could have lived, actually. If he repelled TP'd, I think he would have gotten out. There's no way EG can... Um, they'd have to like right-click kill him with uh, Ursa. That would have been really tough. Coddle's going to be recalling everyone in. This could be a, a big, messy fight pretty soon. It's a nice so advantage for them, actually. Uh, Z Freak reflects, but oh, it goes in Biz. Okay, he's fine. Doing a pretty good job, um, but now EG definitely can stabilize a bit with the split push. The Coddle's so good at that. RTZ can go one place, push it out, bring it back a second later, uh, take a five man fight that maybe the enemy team doesn't expect. Oh, here we it go. Complexity. The universe, though. Yeah, they realize EG are getting a little comfortable. They got to keep them uh, back in their place, so. I just go for a nice rotation. Yeah, our draft and panel was talking up and up about 747's Lena, but holy mackerel, Melons' Lena is pretty damn good as well. Yeah, he's doing really well at the laning stage. Uh, he missed like a few stuns, but they were kind of hard stuns anyways, and I, I like the Yule's pickup. It just gives them a reliable setup, because um, before this, I mean, the, obviously in laning stage, Magic Missile's a great setup for the Lena stun, but in the mid game, not so much. Projectile speed, the cast range is a little low. Once he buys Yule's, he gets a guaranteed stun on enemy heroes every time, and that's going to start the whole chain of him stunning to his allies stunning. Alright, 20 minutes in. This is where, you know, some big turnarounds usually happen. The laning phase is sufficiently over. Heroes have usually their first round of decent items. EG, they're, they're playing smart. They've stopped the bleeding. It feels like we haven't seen you know, Ursa just get Shane killed in a while. Oh, my, definitely playing coming. this strategically. Z Freak might break this though. They put a sentry on Cliff. All right, Monkeys is going to break it. He walks straight in, but he's able to blink himself away. Now our Cheesy is channeling up a stun. May end up going with the self stun. In fact, he's just going to be sitting there thinking as all of complexity are able to get themselves out in time. Very nice heads up from them. Yeah, it, it seems so weird for him to go for a blink dagger on Omni, but it really paid off in moments like that. If you, if you spot the enemy team, yeah, you could repel yourself maybe, but if you're not fast enough, they're going to silence oh. you. Zebra nice got there. it, was going to the side shop, or secret shop. But if, if you're not fast enough and the Earth Spirit sees you first, he'll silence you, and then you don't get a repel. But have, by having the blink dagger, he gives himself a slightly better chance to actually get out of these and get Looks like Z Freak might pay for that courier snipe with his life. TP going to get cancelled, and Sumail gets the kill for that. Finally, Ursa starting to feel a little bit ferocious. Three kills, six deaths. Still, still rough, but he's getting there slowly. He's got a blink. He's making some progress. He's also got the uh, morbid mask if he wants to buy out. Yeah, uh, we'll see what he goes. Um, maybe Vlad's. I don't think Mask of Manus is quite ready yet. I keep looking at that item. I'm like, damn, nobody buys Mask of Manus ever again. But um, <laughs> Ursa is definitely one here that could be okay on. Um, Kind of really needs a BKB. Even like an Ags would be kind of nice. He could remove a stun, but I think he just has to go BKB. There's too many stuns to remove. 747's almost got his uh, his, his Scotty. He's almost there. Rick Gold away. So he's now into this. Once you get from like Maelstrom to Scotty, it, it puts your Lone Druid from like squishy to like, okay, he's squishy, but he's really fast and he's got 2500 HP. That's hard to kill. <laughs> so now that he's there, I think um, Cole's going to feel a lot more comfortable. And pretty soon here, they can start trying to go high ground. Especially uh, once is, they get four stuff. What does Druid want to be doing after his Scotty? What's his next play? You know, it's really up to him at that point. Um, I, I think something like Mjolnir would work. Um, he could go AC. That would be pretty solid. He could go Butterfly. Would be really good against Ursa, against Alchemist, against Brewmaster, all those heroes. If he really wants to, he could get oh, a BKB. Focus is going to get scanned out. Ready and know what's up. They don't have a ward there, though. So I think they know they're in that area. But it doesn't necessarily mean they, they're smoking. Oh, they're not farming top, which is a little bit revealing. And I think everyone on EG is a little curious what's going on. Arteezy, he's, he's playing with fire. He doesn't really have any nice escape. He's just going to go ahead and try to TP out. Can they break it? Oh. Uh, Lundruid actually probably could have done that, but he didn't react well enough. He needed yeah, to he... sprint right at and do the roar. You need to roar or just stick the bear on him and hope for the world's luckiest route. Bear's real slow, though. Uh, most players don't buy boots for them, so... Just leaving him to fend I, for himself. You know, as awesome as the Lonely Druid is, where you just stack up the hero, I really miss, like, the six-slotted bear. Fun to watch. <laughs> he may get there this game. You never know. <laughs> <It's an laughs> Twelve-slotted Lone Druid. 
Now, if, if things get a little bit crazy here and the game continues, Pumas is going to start buying Aghanim Scepters first. There are a lot of good heroes for that. In fact, maybe another reason that Ursa doesn't want to buy one for himself because he would rather wait for Alk to buy him one. Um, Zai picked up his own, of course, because Keeper can't really delay for Alchemist to buy it, but Brewmaster Axe is really good. Um, Earth Spirit Axe can be really, really good this game because he can just geomagnetic grip somebody to him. That's getting gone on. He's really good on Ursa, too. So this game just kind of continues at some point. It'll, it'll be tough. And they got the Aegis now, but the fact that it got delayed for like 10 minutes, that's pretty big because that could have been Cole maybe forcing a high ground earlier. Now it's delayed to the point where Alk has just about everything he wants. What do you think about the choice to give the Aegis to Moo instead of 747? Bad idea because uh, Venge is a little bit harder to keep alive, especially without like movement speed items. Goes oh. for the Silver Edge pickup though. Speaking of keeping people alive, there's going to be pings out. We could have a little rumble in the jungle going on. Uh, no more invis for Venge though. They see him right now. And they also see Nyx actually. They know they're all here. I know they're here, but what can they do about it? That's the bigger question. Z turns off be. Radiance. Mistake by Z Free Care. Catch up. It's hard. It's really hard. Coddle's calling away Arteezy. Arteezy will get out safely. And you've got a TP out from the Earth Spirit, so... All of EG do get out safely, but they definitely couldn't turn that fight in their favor. Still showing that they're... Oh, scary. ...having some difficulties. Overall team net worth, about 10,000 in favor of Call. Similar story with XP. EG are looking alright. You talked about it, though. I mean... This alchemist, he's starting to get a little spooky. Yeah, he's he's basically just avoiding fights like always. But I, I'm a little worried for him for the fact that his net worth is not stupidly ahead. He's only 5,000 gold ahead of the Lone Druid. It's not too surprising because the hero has like such ridiculous steroid skills from Rabbit, for example. It's like a SNY, pretty much, just for skill points. It's super valuable, and he's been farming really incredibly fast. But uh, MKB next. I uh, like this choice. Oh. The freak goes for the punish onto Ursa, but he blinks away. Split second before it would have hit. And Universe is just, he doesn't have any items really, because he's basically been in his base. Um, hasn't really felt comfortable farming places. Gonna go for a Vlad, so it'll be a nice thing to make his heroes more tanky, but that's that. Won't do that much. Looks like with uh, Universe going for Vlad's, Ursa's just gonna skip over lifesteal completely for now, yeah. at least. Um, glad, I'm kind of glad he didn't buy it, because it just. It would have been okay, but does he really want to spend 2,400 gold to make a Vlad's for himself? It's, it's, uh, you know, he needs damage or survivability or something. And the Diffusal Blade's a great option for that. Can remove Repel. Well, not Repel, but Guardian Angel at least. Oh, here we go. Down bottom. Sumail might be able to score a kill onto Monkeys. Guardian Angel comes out, but Arteezy and the gang, they're focusing down this Lone Druid in the meantime. He is very solo right now. He, he, is, he is the Lone Druid. He's, uh... He's, he's dead. A really good way to use Diffusal on a creep. <laughs> I don't know why I smelled did that, but you can also remove Rabid from Lone Druid. So basically kill his 20% movement speed for like 30 seconds. Um, debuffs are really good against Lone Druid for that reason. So finally they get a huge kill. Yeah, that one's pretty important. The fact that RTC was able to snap that up. 400 more gold to him. Oh, Melon's gonna be looking to punish. It's Panda. There's going to be the Keeper of the Light trying to get more people into the party, but not going to be in time to save the Panda. Arteezy trundling up a stun. There's a nice kick through. The Ventral Spirit could be in trouble. Still spinning on an Aegis, remember. There's going to be a swap Watch back. Out. She's running. Moo. A little, little bit of trouble there. Now. He's fine. He took? Oh, they've jumped. No, he's screwed. He's screwed. <laughs> I was like, he, he's fine? He's, uh, I thought he just not... had to buy himself time because the, the Shadow Blade had like a 10 second cooldown. He bought himself like 5 seconds, so he would come off cooldown, go invis. Now there's a gem. And and to be honest, the, the Shadow Blade is really not done much for Avenge. I feel like Mu thought that he was going to be able to get some kills with it and stuff, but especially upgrading this Silver Edge cost him a lot. Like, very expensive upgrade, but he hasn't been able to turn it into anything really useful. It's obviously great to break Brewmaster passive and what Ursa passive and stuff and, and limit damage output, but if that was just like Ayasha or something, I guarantee he would have farmed a lot faster this game. Yeah, I think uh, Complexity may have fallen into that trap of they had that really strong early game momentum, but just didn't plan ahead sufficiently to deal with this Alchemist that's getting momentum, didn't count on EG, turtling effectively, didn't count on them, you know, playing safe and stop bleeding kills, so. Complexity feels like they're losing a little bit of their acceleration. They still do have that, you know, objective net worth and XP lead, but it's risky. They feel like they really have to think through all these rotations they make. It's just so difficult for them to get a high ground opportunity just because of the split push of uh, Radiance and Coddle bringing him back and... 
they it's like they have the they have the mobility disadvantage this game despite having like you know lone druid and bench and stuff it's not quite the same as being able to move around the map think about swapping our tz is just very unlikely worth it Pulse some mail in as well. And bear on bear action going there. <laughs> One of them just wants to play though. And if he gets really scared, he's gonna roar. Just uh, scream wait. like, no! <laughs> Stop! <laughs> Thanks, Birch. <laughs> really glad we voice acted that out. <laughs> Alright, any interesting item pickups going on now? It seems like we've kind of reached that point. Oh gosh! Almost caster's curse. So I was in some danger. He's yeah, taking anything. a lot of reflections. That's pretty much all Z Freak's doing. Uh, he's got eggs at least, but kind of needs mobility. Oh, they're going to go on here. we here. go. There's the fight. Arteezy going to get Yules up. Going to have to stun himself. Nope. Takes the stun off. Melons. He'll be getting away. Unless Earth Spirit kicks him in the face. So, yeah, he needed a TP earlier than that. The, um, the repel wore off is the issue. He waited too long. The Yules also kind of hurt him too because he, he prevented yeah. the stun on Sumail, but... I mean, well, you can feel that dissonance of like, I don't want him to stun me, but if I use him, it makes him not stun himself, so... Yeah. Had to make a tough choice in the end. I think he may have been dead either way. Everybody on Cole is farming super fast, but... But Arteezy is getting out of control finally, and Lone Druid's having trouble keeping up because he knows that the ganks are possible, so he can't just like farm as greedily as he could for the first like 10-15 minutes. So now his, his numbers are just scaling behind. It's, we're real close to Ag's territories. Uh, just finishing an AC and then it's time to buy for allies. Tumel's got his BKB just about. He's queued up a sheep stick as well. Good choice. Very good for securing kills against lots of stunners. Who's the first Ag's target? Because Cod already bought his own. He, he's a strong, independent man. Probably throw it on Ursa first, I think, just because by having it, it would allow him to remove a stun from himself. So even if he gets initiated on first, he could always remove it with Enrage and then pop BKB to try to run. So I would probably almost for sure put it on him first. Or the opposite line of thinking is give it to Earth Spirit. That way Earth Spirit can save this no matter what kind of crap he gets into. So probably one of those two. I definitely wouldn't put it on Brewmaster yet. The, the eggs on Brew is good, but it's not prioritized over Alchemist or over Ursa or Earth Spirit, I don't think. Smoke up down bottom. Call. They're hunting around. Find any radiant heroes in the jungle, so they're going to go make their way towards mid. Tumail is visible, but a long way to go to catch up to him. Got a really good cast range for, for Lena here. Aether Lens and uh, cast range perks, so they can set up fights, but the game just got so out of control. Like, that, that Roche deal actually did so much. That was that was the window where Cole kind of needed to pressure, like the 15 to 20 minute mark where they're way stronger than Niji, but dealing the Aegis the just, just made them feel unsafe, so now they got a fight. Smoke reveal is going to get popped almost immediately by Z Freak coming in. Melons in some serious trouble, gonna get swapped back. Moo going in, but they still end up losing the Lena. That's a gem on the deck. Monkeys is gonna Guardian Angel. Is it gonna be enough? Primal Split comes out. They still kill off the Omni. Everyone else running for the hills. Complexity is feeling like uh, they are definitely on the back foot of this, this game. They're gonna back. lose more. It's just... Oh, that was a dieback on the Omni Knight. That's not good. Devon Ben 4 7. Oh, he meant to dodge it. Into the fight. Oh, no. Great man to dodge by RTZ there, guaranteed the follow-up stun, and all of a sudden the game just over. Like, that was a 5,000 gold swing right there in that fight. A uh, big mistake from Z Freak as well, he walked into the fight, they've got a gem, he didn't use Spiked Carapace before burrowing, and he's not necessarily the person that wants to go in first either, but the issue is like, they, the game got delayed for so long that EG on all of their heroes just got really farmed. They, they split pushed the map better, they didn't allow Cole to go high ground with that Aegis steal. Cole didn't get to hit their, their power curve at all. Yep, Mu has to sit back and idly watch as the tier threes and the racks are getting slashed down. Z Freak, he's got an axe, he's just very scared. He's burrowing. Mu jumps in to try to get aggressive. Got the Silver Edge going, but again, with the drop gem last fight, they got vision of this. Mu. Are you so still low. alive? So low! Hits oh. the shrine! Mu, are you seriously getting away with this right now? Meanwhile, oh, Urs is just mistake. soaking up all the damage in the world. Sumail tries to go after the bear, but does end up losing his own life. Meanwhile, the whole set of racks does fall, so... No, trades. The massive mistake there by Sumail, but it, it, it's okay in the end. They still got the racks. They still want a huge team fight. Beating one death is not going to change that too much. But 
slightly uh, sloppy execution as well. Moose should have done a swap on top of the spiked carapace, but he was a little bit off target, so Z-Freak didn't hit him. Which would have been a little bit easier in the opposite way. But it got him a kill in the end, right? So, uh, good thing he made I a mistake. still can't believe that Moo didn't die there. Very Not quick good. reaction. I 100% would have just panicked. Uh, but he was able to go make his way to the shrine and get that off. Everybody on EG was like, he's definitely dead. Let him go. Right. They you just know, stopped Karen. They're like, eh, he'll, he'll get finished off by something. Somebody will kill him. I know that. Didn't happen, though. Um, kind of feel like maybe Z-Freak's build was a little bit weak. Maybe he should have gone Blink first. It's kind of hard to say. I know Ags is really popular, but in, in their playstyle, they needed somebody to initiate. And him walking in is not a very safe way to do that. I think it's kind of cost them possibly some time. At the same time, though, if they're trying to hold high ground, if they know it's consistently going to be a push-in from EG, uh, Ags, Nyx is one of the best turtle abilities in the game. It definitely is, but... Um, they were ahead for so much game. Like, why Why do you need to... You probably shouldn't itemize a based on that. It's yeah, still that's... such a good item, but it, it, it was... I don't think it really fit the game. Melon's gonna break the... Yeah. Oh, he's gonna break the smoke with his face. He goes in, he's gonna get uh, Yule'd up there, trying to buy him some time. Meanwhile, Z-Freak oh, getting chopped up by the bear, but Omni Knight comes in, trying to save his team. He has the Guardian Angel. He pops it off right now. Doesn't stop Sumail from getting the kill in the Nyx. This is complexity trying to minimize bleeding, but the Omni Knight, he's fallen victim. He's got himself purified, he's able to get it off, but his man is a leaking. And he's keeping walking, he's gonna get stunned. He's gonna get picked off. Now Omni has no buyback as he previously spent it. 747, gonna get focused here as well. They stun the Venge. Oh, this is just a massacre. Yeah, they're just gonna wipe them all up. Just a rundown at this point. Cole lost their timing window big time. They That, that Aegis steal really made a big difference. So it led into eventually a lone druid dying. They weren't able to take a Rax or a high ground. They weren't able to, to get tactical advantage from their creeps being stronger and always pushing out in without What's them being there. Oh, what? Offensive GG. I'm not even. I'm not even surprised. He's not kidding. I, I guarantee he did that on purpose. But like, he got outplayed all early game. That's exactly what I was talking about. Like, he's better than these guys, and he got outplayed in his lane three or four times. Yeah, it's, Actually, that's all right, Tamail. You, you can tap out all you want, but. Yeah, your, your Ursa wasn't so impressive for the first 20 minutes. He's gonna be just fine now, that's for sure. Did I hear uh, Andrew shit talking? Uh, no, they're, they're making fun of me because I, I gave oh. Sumail a hard time, but oh, okay. let's be real, that Ursa changed that. I'm not saying I could have done better, yeah. but he did yeah, not just, have a great lane. It's like watching a, a pub and somebody gets real salty um, offensively, you know? Like, like, do you really have to gank me five times mid? Like, <laughs> oh, that guy's really upset right now. I mean, that's the typical Sumail thing, right? Like, even if he does get outplayed or ganked a lot, he still plays amazing and comes back and wins the game in a lot of cases. And it's looking like that's the case right now. EG's just out of control now. Ursa's the second highest net worth. I thought... Be real. Might as well be number one. I thought this Ursa was completely dead in the water after, like, his sixth death in a row. But he definitely just composed, stopped bleeding, started rotating with his team, and he's definitely back in this. Look at that. From having, like, a phase boots and nothing else for 20 minutes, now he's got... Oh, so nice six slot items. They're in a good spot. It's like Brewmaster will come back. Who's getting the eggs? You just skipped it. Uh, yep, Brewmaster. Okay, so he went for Brewmaster before it's spirit. I think. Oh, look at that hex being shown off. Melons is able to get out of it. A kill on the Ursa here would be huge. Light Striker A dodged out, but they still do swap through that BKB. Universe makes his way forward. Does get off the primal or is split. It? Crit's trying to roll on through, gets stunned up by the Carapace. Nyx is just holding Michael on Brew. in the center of this fight. Monkey's able to activate the shrine, save himself. There's going to be a lone druid limping away. 747 fighting under his tier 4 towers. And now it's going to be the Alchemist left to deal with all the damage being sprayed uh, at winning. him. Alchemist is dead. Okay, they won a team fight. Pretty good. They actually killed Alchemist. Can they get more? Mm, they're looking. It's hard for monkeys to actually catch up here as Blink keeps getting disjointed and actually, oh, it's a great bait. They were just trying to get complexity out of their base to mail. I'm almost dead, just breaking in a kill. He may still die to melons here. So I far. Seals. Yeah, this is going to be a, a nice little fight kills. for uh, complexity. Pick up another gem or get one gem back at least. That was not bad at all for full. I didn't think they were going to win that fight with the swap onto the BKB Ursa, but they got to fight him under the tier 4s, there was some great chain disables, but there just wasn't enough focus fire damage to kill the lone druid, and he stayed alive and ultimately wins the fight. I'm really glad that uh, Suzy's playing ranged lone druid right now, because he's using that like white bear, that's really scary. You know what I'm talking about? That white bear cosmetic? Panda? You're scared no, like of his, pandas? No, his hero one, when he transforms. Oh, okay. That white one with like red teeth and it's creepy, it really creeps me out. I'm really glad it's, that ranged lone druid is popular right now. 
Well, you know, I, I'm glad I don't run into too many bears in my daily life. I don't have to deal with, <laughs> with all that. Alright, 747. He's just cleaning up these creeps. I mean... They gotta stabilize. They gotta take another fight. They gotta win. And it's gonna be a little bit easier because I think EG feels like the game is in the bag, as, as seen by uh, Sumail's comment. Um, so they might play sloppy is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> but yeah, complexity. both gotta win a lot of team fights. This is their last shot in it. If EG take this game, that's it. They win the first week of the Betway Arena show match. And if uh, Complexity actually get this together, they've got one more shot to redeem themselves and be crowned the victors. I mean, nothing else. Complexity would sure love to win this for pride, saying they just took out EG in a best of five. I mean, they've made it very competitive, honestly. Like it, it could very, in, in a moment, turn into a into a three one, but. They're still outplaying EG in the laning stage in some of the games that they've been playing. That's that's really impressive. This game definitely could have been a lot different if they just maybe itemized slightly different, taken some better early game fights, stuff like that, or forced to fight in any way in the mid game. Yeah, it seemed like Complexity had such a great lead in the early game, and then they just took their foot off the gas pedal just a little bit to farm up and you know, go they back just to care of themselves. And, no, and then Alchemist happened. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it, it was more like EG just didn't give them the opportunity to fight. Then it was uh, Cole took the foot off the gas pedal. They they grabbed items and heroes that should be able to grab kills, but they just the heroes were never really outside the base. That's why Universe was so under farm for so long because he's like I'm gonna sit in the base because I know they can kill me. And it was just basically Sumail running around getting kills and uh, Keeper of the Light doing that as well. Lexi definitely Weird have items. a big task at hand trying to keep out their, the super creeps from their base. Two lanes of creeps with this lineup is pretty difficult. Seven four seven. Clear creeps quickly, but that's not what he wants to be doing. He wants to be chunking away at towers. He wants to be on the aggressive, going for that split push. Have you seen this Lena item build before? I have. I, I can't say I have. <laughs> Real weird. You, you got someone at the door. There's somebody in my. It's okay though. They're not important. Aw. Z freak. Crawling around here. No one's got eyes on him currently. Just said she's on bench, so can find a fight it would be really good for Cole. You know he'd love to be level 25 too. Um, either magic missile piercing the stun would be fantastic or 20% Benazor would be really good too. Got a ton of agility right now. One Druid could really use a force staff as part of his uh, um, hurricane pike. He'd really love to have that I'm sure because he keeps getting caught and he doesn't have the ability to really disengage fully. Busting him some fights. But for now, it's just going to be a little bit of a slow push here, where EG is just going to wait until all the lanes are pushed in. It's pretty much always Swindleman's defending it. Maybe they can just kill him. Kind of hard, because he does have Lotus Orb, so maybe he can defend himself, but... Just going to play it safe on EG's side, I'm sure. Yep, both teams know this is, I mean, one wacky fight away from completely ending. And EG take this game, they take the whole series, complexity, they take this. Not only do they upset, like, everyone's bets, but they're also just going to be riding that momentum into game number five, which is not something you want to do with this EG. The buyback status looks a little better for EG. They've got it on three heroes, all the cores, whereas on Cole's side, it's just the Venge. The one hero that does have buyback also has an Aegis and Cheese, so <laughs> anybody dies in these fights, it's really bad for Cole here. They're going to go back and set up. EG's finally in a decent position to actually take the bot racks, or at least try to. Cole's backing up to set up. This is going to be it. Slow siege of the high guard continues now. Remember game number one, we saw Monkey Centaur just sitting under the tier three, soaking in the damage. And EG are going to have a bit trickier time than that when they actually want to bust up this high ground. They really don't want to mess this up too because they know their opponents can take barracks really fast, uh, mainly of the Lone Druid and the Venge, so... Bad fight and things get a little out of hand once or twice. It, it could be a win. It could take a game that looks like a sure win into, into a game that could be close and... Especially after you shit. Definitely when you don't mess around. <laughs> if anything, yeah. Sumo puts pressure on his team by all chatting that, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, I can imagine them just like glaring him down, like, what do you do, man? They're angry now. All right, call. Makes They're going play in. Harder. They're smoked up. Moo's going to be a great little bait here. Oh, I'm just walking to the lane all alone. Hope no one ganks me. Let's spot out the Cuddle, but Cuddle backs up instantly. Where's the gen at? Probably on Swindles. No, it's on monkeys. All right, that was the Aegis going. So now they've only got cheese advantage here. This would be a good time for the fight for EG. Z freak. 
sees Sumail, does he initiate here? He's got backup, and there he goes. Vendetta Strike into the Impale. Now Ursa's gonna immediately BKB and ult it up. Everyone comes in, including the Lone Druid, who immediately gets stunned. There's Hexes up, Universe is gonna be split and well BKB'd. There's the kill onto the Lina. Everything's getting messy. Guardian Angel. Oh, he's just gonna die. It's, it's death. Oh no, <laughs> it's not great. Buyback from the Ursa. He's gonna get back in here. Sumail is hungry, and he's gonna find himself some lunch. Killing off the Omni Knight, and now Sea Freak is just buried here, throwing out impels left and right, but I don't think it's gonna be enough. Poor little guy's the last one left alive on his team. Venge does have buyback, but at this point, I think you, you can't hold this back with just a Venge. That is not the hero you want to go on. He even went all armor, basically. Five armor for his 15 talent, 250 health for his 20. He got the all stats at 25. He's got 3k HP. He can always remove a stun with his ulti bags that he has, and he has a BKB afterwards. And not oh. the first. They walk next to uh to Coddle, who has a gem, so Deep Freak just begs for death and he's gonna call the GG. He is ready to end it. He realized, alright, that's it, I'm done. So Evil Geniuses will be your first winner for the Betway Arena King of the Hill show match. Big congrats to them. Um they played very, very well, looked a little iffy between games one and two, and Cole definitely showing some really good signs of strength as well. Like okay, they lost three one, but um, they they played game one pretty convincingly with some small mistakes. I think Monkey had an amazing performance consistently all day. Um, if any if, if anything, I think the guy that maybe underperformed a little bit maybe Z Freak 